Conservative head of the judiciary, Ibrahim Raisi, is widely seen as the front-runner with support from hardliners. Mohsin Rezaei is former chief of the Revolutionary Guard, dubbed the perennial candidate. He's run and lost four times already. Amir Hossein Razidadeh Hashemi is the youngest candidate at 50 years old and the former deputy parliamentary speaker. And Abdul Nasser Hamati is the former central bank governor, leading opponents to paint him as responsible for Iran's economic woes. He supports reviving the nuclear deal with Western powers. In a moment, we'll go live to Asad Beg in Tehran, but first, his report on how economic concerns could be a major factor. On the streets of Iran, there's one topic that everyone is talking about, the economy, hit by some of the toughest sanctions Iran has ever seen, as well as what some believe is government mismanagement. The COVID pandemic has caused the economy to plummet further. In 2019, the country saw widespread demonstrations after a fuel price hike. According to the Iranian government, more than 200 people were killed in violence. There's still unrest, but it's not limited to fuel prices. The goods we sell are basic necessities. Since last year, prices of some items have gradually increased by 30 to 50 percent. Pasta, noodles, salad dressings, tuna, tomato paste, everything you can imagine has had a 30 to 40 percent price rise in just one year. Iranian carpets are famous around the world, but even this trade has been hit hard. They blame it on many reasons, but usually it's the sanctions. We have to live, but we're struggling economically. Certainly the main reason is the sanctions, but management has a significant role too. The new president will have an uphill challenge when it comes to the economy. The chronic problem we've always faced is inflation. It's always been high and in the past decade was 40% on average. We had two inflation shocks in the last four to five years. Inflation in the short term could be controlled by interest rates, which in turn leads to recession. We can't continue going on with the current 40% inflation anymore. The government should fill its budget deficit and implement reforms. In the south of Tehran, many people earn less than $150 a month. The walls here have adverts for labourers, usually paying less than the minimum wage. The cost of living is very high. It's very difficult. People have many problems, rents and other miseries. You don't know whether to pay the rent or do shopping. Only God helps us. Officials should think about us. Renters, the youth and their future. I just feel ashamed when I can't buy something for my kid. At times, I can't really buy what I want for her. Economic conditions are very bad. The price of cooking oil used to go up once a year, but cooking oil or butter went up four times last year. We could make ends meet. Our condition wasn't good, but it wasn't very bad either. Now, I can't buy butter or cheese. I expect from the new government to make goods cheap. In this poor neighborhood, some still hope things can change. It's working class areas like this one across Iran the political establishment relies on for its core support. And it's the working class whose standard of living must be improved if the new president is to achieve any sort of success. Asad Beg, Al Jazeera, Tehran. We can cross live now to Asad Beg. Uh, tell us what the expectation is on turnout. Well, so far, if you look at the polls carried out inside the country, it's not going to be very high. Now, the lowest turnout this country ever had in presidential elections was around 50% back in 1993. Now, some of the polls are saying that it will be less than that. But what I can tell you is last year's parliamentary election here had the lowest turnout since the revolution in 1979. It was 42% nationwide. And here in Tehran province, it was around 25%. So if it is less than 50%, and Ibrahim Raisi, the, the lead in this election, and who's also the judicial uh, chief, the conservative candidate, if he manages to get uh, just under 16 million votes like he did last time, he will become Iran's next president. Now, many here think that it's already a done deal, that there was no, no real opposition uh, to Ibrahim Raisi, so he will definitely be the next country's president. That's what many people uh, believe. So the question is, how many people are going to turn out? What percentage of the vote is he going to get? And what is he going to do to make the daily lives of Iranians, uh, Iranians better? But if you've been 
been watching state TV here. They've been pulling out all the stops to get people to come out to vote. They've used the religious arguments, the political ones, and the nationalistic ones. But whilst we've been out on the streets, at least here in Tehran, there were many people telling us that they're not going to vote. They don't see the candidate uh, that they want in the election because of those disqualifications. And many people just feel let down over the last four years because of the President Hassan Rouhani government and their uh, handling of the economy.